just have a look at these. That's how fish can get behind your pole rigs. Look at that, it might even echo when I talk. Look at that. That is unbelievable. This lake behind me is over 20 years old and even the owner of this fishery isn't quite sure what fish live in this lake and that's why we're here today. We're here to film the fishery team netting this lake and I'm sure it's going to throw up a few surprises. This is Strip Lake at the fantastic Lindholm Lakes complex. The first job for the fishery team has been to drop the water level. As you can see, they've already dropped the water level quite substantially. That's gonna make the job of netting this lake much easier. The next task was to get the diggers out and to remove these platforms that have been in here. Well, we're right at the beginning of January and we've literally had about seven days of rain. This is the adjacent lake, this is Loco. And as you can see the water levels, you can see how high they are. It's caused a real problem for the team because they've been trying to pump water out of this lake. But yesterday, throughout all the rain and everything, it was just filling up. There isn't a river here that feeds this. All this water is literally just coming in through the actual water table. So they've got the pumps running over there behind me, which you can probably hear, but we think we've got it low enough to have a clean sweep. But now the water level's dropped, it's time for the lads over there to get the nets out and start having a sweep through this lake to start removing the fish. They've got the net laid out, as you can see. Quite fine, actually, finer than what I thought. They did have a sweep through yesterday, but they said they got lots and lots of fry. There were tons of fry in here as well. Lots of small fish, but it was mainly silverfish what they had a run through yesterday. The net wasn't pinned down to the bottom, so the net was coming through much higher in the water than normal, and that's why they picked up lots and lots of skimmers. There were lots of bream as well, up to three pound. But today, obviously, they're going to get some weights on the bottom of the nets today, so it's going to go down much, much lower, down towards the bottom, and that... that it, is hopefully going to pick out some of the bigger fish as well. You can see from this peg, this is peg, or well, was peg eight. You can see how far back it's actually undercut now, these pegs. And obviously these banks can, can be very much undercut as well, as you can see. And obviously they become dangerous. So that's part of the reason why they're doing this. They're doing it to obviously just check the fish stocks as well, but it's just, they're doing it so they could drop the water level and they're going to actually re-sculpt all these pegs and they're going to re-sculpt out there. They're going to have a bit of a shelf going out about three meters and then it's going to drop down into deeper water so the fish are going to have different depths to be in at different times of year which it's not something that they've currently got on this lake at the minute because it's pretty much the same depth all the way through and obviously from a safety issue they're obviously going to uh, make sure these banks are safe as well and put some new platforms in lots of the pegs over on this bank have actually really undercut and you can see the length of the legs on these platforms just look how long they need to be Look how undercut this one is. It's just cut right back here, but it is actually undercut there as well. So that's all part of the bank sculpting they're going to be doing when they've finished netting it. The aerator's out, in case you wonder what one of those looks like when it's out of the water. There we go, that's normally out there, about halfway. And then over here, you can probably hear that I'm over near the pump. This is the pump that's pumping the water out of here. Yesterday, that was a major, major problem because it was raining so much yesterday, it was just filling up. There's the pump working hard. Got a bit of a leak. <laughs> and that's pumping the water directly into this other lake over here, which is Beaches. As you can see, that's not quite as high as, as Loco. Loco, the water level's up to the platforms and over on one or two of them there. There's still some, uh, some uh, extra room there for some extra water to go in. So that's getting pumped back into there. Well, we all know how lakes like this can really end up with loads of undercut banks and stuff. Just have a look at these. This is what happens to lakes. When you think you've got your float close to the bank or you drop your method feeder and you think you're tight in, just have a look at how undercut some of these banks are. These are obviously reeds and stuff here. It's uh, This is quite a deep margin, this one here. But just have a look at these. Look at that. You drop your feeder or your float close to these. Look how far underneath, under there you can go. Look at that. Absolutely. Unbelievable. 
That's how fish can get behind your pole rigs. Look at that, it might even echo when I talk. Look at that. That is unbelievable. That must go back to somewhere over there. So when you're foul looking fish on your pole rigs and you're wondering how they're getting behind your float and stuff when you're fishing close to the bank, that's exactly what can cause it. But that's just what happens with lakes like this over time. So the weights we've got today, as you can see, these have been added on. They're obviously just gonna help weight the bottom of the net down. Obviously, they're the floats for the top end. So these are gonna weight it down, obviously, to try and keep it lower down in the water. So hopefully it won't miss as many fish. Never gonna get all the fish in one go, so it could be several attempts, but those weights will obviously uh, get down to the bottom and hopefully increase what they're gonna get on this first run through. The net's in place, they've got it running right down the middle and we're going to start at this top end first, we're going to net up here. So AJ's over there on that other bank and down this bank here, working his way down this margin is Alex. And they're just going to work their way into that corner. AJ's going to work his way into that corner. Hopefully the weights on the nets are going to stay much lower down in the water down on the bottom and then they're going to get a, a one big full sweep of this top end of the lake. They've worked their way down into this bottom corner and now they're going to work their way into the middle of this bank where they're going to meet up and that's where they bring all the net in in one go. Dragged it right back, as you can see now, there's not much left there. But this is the bit where they need to make sure that they're getting that net as close to the bank as possible so that hopefully they're not too many fish escaping underneath but hopefully those weights have done the trick and they're going to weight that weight that net down so that netting is going right down to the bottom well they peeled it right back now you can see all the uh, clouds of silt and everything coming up in the net pushing out there obviously fishing there trying to get out as regards to the stocking of this lake, we know there's a hell of a lot of carp and F1s in here, loads and loads of silverfish. And there are reportedly, and there are have been lots of big perch caught as well. So it'd be interesting to see what sort of size they might be. We're just about there now, ready to pull the bottom up and bring it all out together. Starting to see the fish activity now. Some big skimmers there. The odd one escaping over the top there, there's the silverfish. Aaron's just transferring those, they've gone straight into beaches, all those skimmers, all those big perch, they're going straight into this one. Yesterday the silverfish that they got went into Loco, which is the lake at the back, but these are all going into beaches. Get that one for a perch. So I think you'll agree that was an absolute incredible amount of silverfish. I'm sure there's going to be some people watching this that have fished this lake in the past, myself included, that have sat there and limped home for 30 pound of F1s and carp when there's that many silverfish in. I'm sure there's quite a few people uh, thinking they might have missed a trick there fishing for them, but unbelievable amount of skimmers. They have all gone in beaches at the back and all those great big perch as well. So now the net is going in again, bank to bank. I'm going to do one full sweep now, right the way to that far end, and I'm sure this time we're going to get some better fish, I think.
even more skimmers and big perch. Roach. Well, the amount of silverfish we've seen already has been absolutely incredible. We're just at the end of the third run now. This is the, well, it's the second full run, but this is the end of the third run through. We're back at the top end here, and I would imagine these fish are going to be going in into beaches also. We're going to see if we get some bigger fish in this uh, this run through. The sheer number of silverfish that were coming out of this lake was absolutely incredible. However, the biggest mystery was where were the carp and F1s? We know there's a massive head of them in this lake. Some had already been removed, but we knew there were lots more still in the lake. So with the water level dropping overnight, I took the opportunity to return the following day to give the lads a hand. And that is when we started to see some of the bigger carp and F1s appearing in the nets. The next thing that needs to happen is they're clearly going to need a few more runs through with the net. The water level needs to drop. You could probably hear the pump in the background. So that's getting reduced all the time as long as it stays dry. So they're going to have a few more runs through over the next couple of days. The next process is then going to be once the fish are out, get the rest of the water out and then start re-sculpting these banks, doing away with the undercut banks and making this lake deeper down the middle. And that's something that I'm really looking forward to filming for you over the coming weeks. I was fortunate enough to fish this lake just a few days ago, right here on this peg that I'm on now. And if you'd like to watch that video, the link to that is actually on screen right now. So I hope you've enjoyed this insight and I really look forward to updating you from this fishery over the next few weeks.